You would have thought, considering the hubbub and scurrying around and the drama about the Chagos Islands, that we might actually hear from the islanders. That seems rather strange that their voices have drifted out of the mix. Uh, the only place I've found so far where they've been speaking at length is Al Jazeera. That's a horrible, horrible Middle East station. But let their speaking on there, and here's what they have to say. Let's have a listen. This is what the people of the islands actually have to say about Britain. Since we can actually hear them here, let's blow them up a bit and let them talk for two or three minutes. For years, the people of the Chagos Islands have petitioned to be heard. In world courts and at the UN, they've asked for the right to determine their future. Not for the first time, the British government has done it for them. We've been stabbed in the back by the British government again. Over the question of self-determination. Self-determination, very important. The Chagos Islands were occupied by Britain in a deal that gave Mauritius its independence in 1968. The indigenous Chagossians became refugees, resettled in Mauritius, the Seychelles and the UK. Now Britain's last colony in Africa will return to Mauritian sovereignty and many Chagossians who hope to go home fear their identity may be wiped out. So what options do you think are open to you? I mean, right now, <laughs> frankly, I don't know. Perhaps we have to sit down, assess, and see what, what, what campaign we have to start now for at least before everything gets implemented. Mm. Like the British government, at least we have the decency to listen to us. As part of the new agreement with the Mauritian government, Britain retains a 99-year lease on Diego Garcia, one of the islands and home to a joint UK-US military base. The British government describes the decision as historic, righting the wrongs of the past, protecting international security. But for members of the Chagossian community in the UK, it's not that simple. They see it as a double betrayal. All the states in the world should respect the right to the self-determination. Again, where is our identity? Are we Mauritian? Are we Chagossian? Are we British citizen? No one asked them in 1968. No one has asked them now. Jonah Hull, Al Jazeera, Crawley. Let's stop sharing that Make sure for a to minute. subscribe uh, to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera. And let's make sure that, by the way, we don't get a sound blast back from Windows again. So there's the actual islanders speaking who have been noticeably absent from the BBC or ITV's coverage. That's about the most coverage I could actually find of them. Now, the way they were removed from the island in 1968 is rather un makes for a rather unpleasant and grim reading. Lord Grim Greenhill commented to that they wanted a set of rocks that they were theirs, essentially, and that they're all that were there was a few Tarzans and Man Fridays. <laughs> the language of colonialism, it, it would seem, is something that Lord Greenhill must have excelled in. Now, uh, if you want to read about the way the island is removed and dumped into Mauritius and their animals killed, it doesn't make for lovely reading. And I imagine it coming back as a kind of out of the depths of history is causing the British government no shortage of embarrassments, especially as the uh, Diego Garcia is an island is also featured in lovely reports of rendition of prisoners and torture. So you have a whole host of strands that intersect there.